So big boys are fairly big, clues in the name. On top of their size, they boasted a pretty interesting wheel arrangement of 4884, meaning they had two sets of driving wheels, each mounted on swiveling bogies that allowed them to negotiate tight turns much better. Each bogey was powered with three cylinders, giving the big boys a significant amount of power too. But what if I told you there existed a few absurd steam locomotives with even more driving power? May I introduce you to the triplex locomotives. Steam locomotives built with a 28882 wheel arrangement. These boasted three cylinders per bogey and had 24 driving wheels. They were long and slow, but without question powerful as hell. The first three were built for the Erie Railroad from 1914 to 1916 and could supposedly pull 650 freight cars. If my mathematics is correct, with the average freight car being around 55 foot in length, that means the engines could theoretically haul a train of freight cars roughly 6.7 miles long. An additional triplex was built for the Virginian Railways in 1916, with a 2888 four-wheel arrangement and was given the classification of XA. Despite their immense pulling power, these engines were primarily used as banking engines, helping push heavy freight trains up and over steep gradients. They could never achieve a high top speed, only averaging around 10 miles an hour, with the Virginian 28884 only ever hitting 3 to 5 miles an hour. But their line of work meant that speed wasn't a necessity. The engines also had a relatively poor capacity for coal and water, but as they were only bankers, they were never far from a coaling station or water tower. And yes, because the driving wheels were mounted under the bunker and water tanks, the engines didn't technically have tenders, making them some of the largest tank engines ever built. That's about where the praise for these engines end, unfortunately, as they did have a few noteworthy drawbacks. Firstly was the boiler. Despite its size and steaming capabilities, it often couldn't produce enough steam to meet the demands of the cylinders. Again, they never had to travel far, so this wasn't a glaring issue, but it was still an issue nonetheless. Another problem was how the cylinders exhausted steam. The middle right and front set exhausted the spent steam through the smoke box as standard, but because the middle left and rear set of cylinders exhausted steam via an exhaust to the back of the engine, it meant the firebox had a poor draft, and as such, the engines had a problem with boiler heating. There weren't many other problems with the engines aside from these, but they were still enough to make the railroads not want to build any more. By 1933, all three of the Erie Railroad's triplexes were scrapped, and the one built for the Virginian Railways was taken apart in 1920 and converted into a 2880 and a 282 both of which worked until 1953. Strangely enough though, a patent was granted in 1914 for a quadruplex locomotive, a 288882. The design meant it would have been roughly 129 feet long and weigh almost 400 tons. The design also featured an additional cab for the driver at the front of the engine, a flexible boiler, and two separate boilers served by one firebox. By the time the patent was granted, the flaws in the design of the triplex engines showed that making them even longer wasn't going to work. A quadruplex engine was built in Belgium, but to a much different design. A patent was also put in for a quintuplex engine, a 288882, but this also never saw the light of day. A 2101010102 quintuplex, that's 50 driving wheels, keep up, was featured in Trains Magazine in August 1951, however the idea was merely an artist's speculation and not an actual proposed design. And so, that's the story of the triplex locomotives, another interesting example of how the extremely heavy rail loading gauge in America allowed engineers to design locomotives with no regard for weight limits or length, allowing us to truly see the sheer possibilities of rail locomotion. Just don't expect to see anyone building one anytime soon. Subscribe for more.